Uh, we'll start with the, with the myth, okay? Uh, the, the, the issue with happiness is that most of what we know about happiness is wrong, okay? Truly, truly, at the core of the machine, the gears are wrong. They're in the wrong place, they're not working. Everything that you think you know, not everything, but most of the things that you, know, you think you know about happiness are myths or misconcepts, okay? Uh, if you manage to, uh, to, to see those uh, clearly, uh, you will find a path that can take you to be happy all the time, okay? Uh, the path will not be easy, but if you see it and you stick to it, eventually you will get there. So remember when I, sent, when I asked Emily to send you that survey that said in five words or less, uh, tell me what you want to be in five years? Wink, wink, when you're coming to attend a course about happiness. Uh, okay, so these are some of the responses. A good father, a traveler, a successful entrepreneur. That happened to so many of you. Okay. Uh, healthy, happy, but wise and wealthy. Uh, oh, here is a green one that is happy and knowing why. Uh, we have a space entrepreneur. Good. Uh, scaling my existing company. I'm just reading a few of them. And then we had two people that said, I want to be happy, which actually is quite simple, really. It's not a very difficult answer. You could be a space entrepreneur but not happy, uh, or you could be not a space entrepreneur but happy, and we really need to start making up our mind. Uh, so in five years or less, what would you want to be in terms of a destination, not a path? Okay. And uh, so the way you, uh, you put them together was success and riches was around 69%, self-improvement was around 19%, and only 12% said that they wanted to be happy, okay? Uh, which I would expect is reasonable in Stanford, surprisingly, okay? Uh, yeah, sorry to say that. Uh, but then I, I started to ask myself, okay, so there could be issues with the, with, the, uh, with the survey. Maybe you guys are already happy, so you want to become something else because you're already happy. So I decided to ask you, if, um, if on those quadrants, uh, number one is you're very happy all the time, okay? Number two, you're um, sometimes somewhat happy, and number three, you're very unhappy. Okay, who would put themselves in number one? Very happy all the time, that's around 10%. Uh, somewhat happy some of the time? Okay, the majority, and then let's find what, who is not happy. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Okay, good, this is going to be an easy day today because you know, we don't have disaster stories, all right? Uh, so, so there is an interesting thing, you know, when you tell me that you're somewhat happy some of the time, I can also tell you that means you are somewhat unhappy some of the time. Is that a fair assumption for that statement? Which means that you're sometimes unhappy, okay? And somehow you're okay with that, right? We'll come to this in a minute. The other question then, of course, is I wanted to, I thought maybe you are not happy, but you don't care. I don't want to be happy, so that's okay, right? Uh, you know, I want to be a space entrepreneur. I'm sorry I'm picking on space entrepreneur, but, uh, you know, uh, right? I want to be a space entrepreneur, and I do not want to be happy. So if your answer is no, can you please raise your hand? Do you not want to be happy? Oh, someone's raising, no, okay. He's just putting his pullover on. Uh, so everyone wants to be happy, right? You want to be happy. Oh, okay, good. Uh, so why then did we not answer happy, okay? For a very interesting reason. Uh, Whatever the story behind this, every one of our parents brought us up in a mentality that I call the insurance policy mentality, okay? They wanted to make sure we're okay. So what did they do? They, they said, look, my wonderful child, you need to work hard for, I don't know what, uh, 12, uh, eight, 16 years of education, or I don't know how long, you really need to study something, you need to have something in your head, you need to work hard for a very, very long time, and eventually, around age 35, maybe 45, maybe 65, you'll be successful. And when you're successful, you become happy, okay? 
I can see uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of faces that are uh, sort of smiling here. Is that how your parents raised you? Say yes. yes. Yeah, right? Success is more important than happiness, right? And the theory here, the myth here is, if you're successful, you're going to be happy. Remember that. But I just started the, my story by telling you I was severely successful, and I was miserable, OK? How often do you see that? How often do you see rock stars committing suicide? And how often do you see you know, uh, very, very successful people who are very, very unhappy? Okay? Um, what, shouldn't, they, shouldn't they have raised us this way? Uh, find out exactly. I remember Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours, right? Find out exactly what makes you super happy. Make that your life purpose. Do so much of it that you end up being successful. And by the way, even if you don't end up being successful, at least you'll be happy, right? Now, that is a very interesting twist, because we, we look at it in terms of delayed gratification. Our happiness is not the purpose. Happiness is just the final result of the purpose, which is success. So in reality, instead of solving for success, so imagine, you know, remember simple algebra, right? If I told you uh, A equals B plus C, and I told you to find A, you'll go out looking for values, parameters that fills B and C, right? But if I told you B equals A plus, uh, minus C, you're going to be looking for B, and you're going to try to do th the things that give you the values of A and C, right? So what you solve for determines exactly what you're going to do. So shouldn't you, instead of solving for success, shouldn't we just directly solve for happy? And so that, to me, was a huge eye-opener. I had that, actually, in a conversation with my mother. My mother, being a typical parent, uh, asked me to be successful. So she said, look, you're going to work very hard. You're going to deprive yourself for a year. Uh, she, you know, the Arabic proverb says, stay hungry for a year. Uh, um, don't dress very lavishly for a year, and then you'll be happy for the rest of your life. And so I met my mother at age 36. I was super rich. I said, Mom, this has been 16 years. Like, seriously, I'm, uh, you know, I, I did all of the terms and conditions, and I'm still not happy, right? So, and, and to me, that was truly the opening uh, uh, argument in terms of an engineering approach, is what am I solving for here? Am I solving for success, or am I solving for happiness? So why is happiness so hard to find? Do you want to shout out a few ideas? Why is happiness so hard to find? Why are we not happy all the time? Yeah? <clears throat> Go ahead. Peer Say? Peer pressure. Peer pressure? Absolutely. Why is happiness so hard to find? You, mo you look for something outside to make us happy. Interesting. Because you're absolutely looking in the wrong place. Thank you. You get distracted. You start solving for other things. Oh, you're brilliant. You look for the reasons that make you unhappy instead of the reasons that make you happy next to you. Stress? Stress? Yeah, because life is hard. We are not built for happiness? So, say again? Because we as humans are not built for happiness. Interesting. OK. I would disagree with that, sir. Happiness is a process. It's a journey, not a goal. Um, interesting. Different priorities and struggle. Yeah. Yep. And what do you compromise on? You compromise on happiness. By the way, there is a diversity issue here. Men are talking more than women, so women shape up. Okay, <laughs> Mona. Unhappiness motivates us to create happiness. Ah, so there is a use for unhappiness, is what you're, what you're yes. saying. Unhappiness is good. I disagree royally. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, peer pressure and comparison, yes. Yeah, so life has to behave a certain way for us to be, un to be happy, and life does not always behave that way because we don't have control. Yeah, the good thing about anti-R movies 
<laughs> okay, I, I, I'll come to that. So we have lots of emotions, not only happiness, and that basically changes our... All right, please. Aha, uh -huh. that's a very interesting philosophical view. So you can only feel happy if you know what unhappiness is. It's a peak and you need to know what else is going on. We think too much about what we don't have. Ah, we think, we think about what we don't have, not what we have. I love this. This is a, uh, this is a book on its own. Can we record this? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, again, prioritization. All right, I'll take two more. Do you feel guilty because? Yeah, absolutely. You feel guilty because you're not supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be working here. Yeah. You're not grateful enough, so you don't see the true blessings in your life. Okay, men need to shape up from now on, okay? Uh, right, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I think that, uh, so we actually, you mentioned everything you mentioned is true, by the way. I, again, when you're trying to fix a machine, you're trying to look for the real, 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 real core issue, right? So the core issue for me is, uh, I think uh, uh, the lady at the back basically said that, was um, you're looking in the wrong places, okay? Uh, you know, imagine if you're looking, have you ever gone looking for your keys when they were in your pocket already, right? You go like, you turn everything and you're so frustrated and you know, people with glasses like me know that very well. Right? Uh, you know, and you look everywhere, but they're in your pocket. How can you find them anywhere when they, are, when they are in your pocket? Okay? And truly, truly, the biggest myth around happiness is that happiness is outside you. Is that happiness is something you need to seek, you need to search for, you need to activate by doing certain things to make it happen. But that's absolutely not true. Because look at every child, the way we came out of the factory, hmm? The default setting of every human being, look at every child. If they're fed, if they're safe, if, they're, you know, if their diapers are not wet, nothing is annoying them, nothing is giving them pain, what are they? Google happy. Absolutely happy. Happiness, as a matter of fact, is mainly the absence of unhappiness. Okay? If you remove the reasons that make you unhappy, your default setting is happy. You, I don't know, I mean, in my part of the world, you get that on the news all the time. You get refugee camps where, you know, the guy in front of the camera is grim and complaining about the situation and how difficult it is, and, and absolutely, it's a horrible situation, right? But, the, but in the background, you find a few kids playing with a ball of rags, right? Laughing their hearts out. They're not thinking through the process of what they're going through. There is a ball, I was fed, I'm happy, okay? Now think about that, because that's the core. That's the core of the issue. The core of the issue is your default is happy. You don't need to look anywhere. You just need to stop being unhappy, okay? It's a bit like your electronic gadgets, right? You, you buy a smartphone, comes out of the box, works in US English, beautiful device, battery life is a, you know, a full day, everything's okay. You install one app that's not great, and then it starts to slow down. Right? Memory consumption is a little not, you know, is, you know, garbage collection is not happening as it should be. Right? And then you, um, you, know, you add uh, um, 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 you know, a few other apps that ha have background uh, things that are happening all the time. Your battery starts to decline so strongly, and you have no idea what went wrong with that device. Right? You change the interface by mistake to Chinese. I know some of you may read it, but most of us doesn't make any sense whatsoever anymore. The machine is total garbage, okay? And that's in a very interesting way what happens with us. So we come into the real world, we are super happy, they pile crap on top of our heads that tells us we shouldn't be happy, we should feel guilty if we're unhappy, we should do this, we should do that, we should believe in certain things and chase certain, certain things and end up uh, um, really unhappy. And the only way you can fix a machine that goes that way is to reset. So rather than telling you about ways to be happy, today I'm going to spend most of the day trying to, to show you ways to, to not be unhappy. But what is happiness? Now that's an interesting one. Actually, that was truly the core of my, uh, of my early research. Let's shout out, what is happiness? Anyone? Being present is happiness? Okay. It's a feeling. 
Happiness. happiness is a feeling. Good. That's a start. How hard to describe, did you say? Yeah. Okay. A feeling of harmony with yourself. Feeling satisfied, okay. Interesting. Why don't we find out, sir? Yeah, what's happiness? Relationships, okay. So if you don't have relationships, you're unhappy by default. Relationships can lead to happiness, but... Okay, let's find out. We'll do a test, okay? Uh, and most of the day, we will just do tests, right? I, I did that at a point in time. It's actually simple. No, not a lot of people do it, surprisingly. I normally would recommend that you do this in 30 minutes. Okay? But for now, we'll just do a quick one. We call it the happy list. We're going to find moments in your life when you feel happy. You're trying to write as quickly as you can, as many answers as you can, to the uh, sentence that starts with, I feel happy when. Okay? So, I feel happy when I have a good cup of coffee. I feel happy when uh, I'm playing football. I feel happy when I achieve something at work. Right? Whatever the answers are, Write as many as you can, as quickly as you can. You have three minutes. So uh, let's just measure intellectual horsepower here. Uh, who has more than 50 written? Nobody. 30. You have more than 50? OK. 30. 10. OK. 20. Right. So maximum 25. Anyone has 25 ideas or so? Good. Uh, oops. I'm revealing too early. Uh, OK. Uh, so, let's have a few of those. Um, uh, sh shout one out, any, anyone. I feel happy when? When you're helping? Common one. Very good one. I feel happy when? When? You lose weight. Good. I do too. <laughs> I can give you tips on that. You feel happy when you, I do too. I feel happy when you walk around this campus. When I have time. When I have time, when I'm not stressed by time. We're going to talk a lot about that. When I help someone else. When I help someone else. Go ahead. When I achieve, something I achieve, I know that. Okay. When I tell someone I love you. When you tell someone I love you, good. When people around me are happy. When people around me are happy, very interesting one. Something new, entertained. Okay, I'll talk a lot about that. When I meditate, when I meditate right? <coughs> Good food. That's an honest man. <laughs> when I think about reason, that's a fabulous one. That's actually your happy list itself, right? So when you write about things that make you happy, you feel happy. When you think about things that make you happy, you, make, you feel happy. <laughs> Two more hours of sleep, my big one, actually, yeah. I sleep five on average, so, yeah. Sh sunshine? Mm. Absolutely, sunshine. Right, uh, ca can I then ask you f in a minute, until I get to my next slide, to tell me, what do you see, don't tell me, think in your mind, uh, what do you see common across all of those? Okay, L you know, now, now we know what the final product we want out of the machine to look like, let's find the commonalities. What is the one single thing that's common across all of these? Think about that for a second. So my theory is uh, going to be debated now. Okay? My theory is whatever you said, I feel happy when I chew gum, I feel happy when I walk, uh, whatever, it happens when the events of life matches your expectation of how life should be. Okay? Whatever it is, hmm? it is a, it's, a, it's that brief moment when you have that interesting feeling we call happiness that we're unable to identify or define, okay? We have that feeling when life behaves as we want life to behave. The opposite is also true, okay? If life behaves in a way that is unlike what we want life to behave, we feel unhappy. Think about that for a second, and then we continue to talk about it. Any, any major disagreements on that? Yes. Absolutely. And when your expectations are constantly changing, and whenever your expectations are missed, you feel unhappy. Wherever your expectations are met, you feel 
happy, right? So that is the reason why, even though I had the cars and the money and the success and the career, every time I achieved an expectation, my expectation changed. Oh, that's not good enough. A Rolls Royce? No, I want two. No, you know, that's not good enough. A happy family? No, I want success, right? There you go. How are cynical people in life? Very unhappy. What, I, what if the event is better than your expectation? You're ecstatic. You're very, very happy. So I, I expected to fail the test. They gave me an A+. Plus. Man, you know, life is fair that I, f I did really bad at the test, but I still got an A+. Plus. That's exactly the reason to be happy, isn't it? Right? Think about that for a while, because it's so simple, as a matter of fact. I call it the happiness equation, right? It's a simple equation. If the equation holds true, you're happy. If the equation holds untrue, you're unhappy. We're going to use that for the rest of the conversation. So. Don't jump into the solutions yet, OK? Just think about the problem with the machine, right? So yes, of course, you're right. If you, if you lower your expectations, you may become happier a lot, a lot more often. But that's not what we're coming to now, OK? Just think about why the machine is broken. Or the machine breaks when the events of life don't meet your expectation. Uh, expectations can be enforced on you by others, of course, mommy and daddy. But sometime you're, you, you have to translate them into expectations of yourself. You know, mommy wants me to get an A+. Plus. That's not an expectation for you until you say, and I want to make mommy happy, OK? Uh, and that's a choice we will come to in a minute. Is that OK so far? Shout one last time, because this is going to be the core of what we're going to talk about going forward. One shout. Mm -hmm. OK, an ambitious person. So only when events are better than expectations, I'm happy. We'll come to that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Of course, you didn't expect that as an expectation. OK? I, I, you know, if, we, if we add to the donuts today cake and coffee, then, and you didn't expect that, you're like, yeah, that's good. That's better than my expectation. My expectation was nothing. This is more than nothing. Cool. OK, I'll move on. We'll come back to this a lot, many times. So. But it's not only the events versus the expectations. We're going to do another test that is one of my favorite tests. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to think about something that makes you unhappy. We're going to give you a minute. I want you to think about something that makes you unhappy. Write it down, look at it, and dwell on it. Like, seriously, make yourself very unhappy. OK? One minute, you can live with that. OK, unhappy enough? A little more, like make yourself miserable like we sometimes do. Right. Now, I want you to keep that thought in your brain. You're now very unhappy. I'm just going to continue the test with one more step. Come on, come on. OK. Um, I want you to make the words from the letters that are on the screen, please, quickly. This is going to only be 20 seconds. So look at the letters. It's three words, a three-word sentence. Can you do that? Anyone shout it out? Come on, it's easy. OK. <laughs> right? Why are you smiling? Weren't you just ha unhappy a minute ago? What happened there? Right? So I'm, I'm just going to make up the, 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 the event. It doesn't, doesn't matter what event made you unhappy. <laughs> OK? The event that made you unhappy was the Uber driver was uh, uh, rude to me. OK? You think about it. You dwell on the thought. It kills you. You're really, really unhappy. OK? What I did there is what I call the blank bra brain test. I suspended your thought for a few seconds, 22 seconds to be exact. OK? I suspended your thought. I told you to stop thinking about the Uber driver. What happened? You smiled. OK? You went back to your default state, and you were happy. OK? Now, that is a very, very interesting experiment. Because uh, uh, it's the thought, not the event, that makes you unhappy. Can you understand that? This is so core to the issue. 
It's the thought, not the event, that makes you unhappy. Okay? I'll give you my best example of that. I used to be a car fanatic. I love cars. Right? I still do, but I don't try to own them anymore. And at a point in time, I had a Saab uh, um, 900 convertible twin turbo, British racing green, beige top, fabulous piece of equipment. Okay? If any of you love cars, you know that we have that thing for Saabs, even though they were really awkward, but we loved them. Okay? And that car was my absolute love. Uh, my toy, I, you know, I, I cleaned it every day more than I cleaned my face. Okay? And then my wife took it. Uh, she had an accident, head-on collision with a truck. Literally. Boom. Right? The car was totaled. Never could drive again. And, uh, but everything in Saab worked properly. Uh, the airbags uh, you know, deployed in time. Everything was OK. My wife walked out with a little bit of a, a pain on her neck, but nothing more. I was super happy. My toy was destroyed, my wife was safe, and I was super happy. Okay? Now, imagine if the scenario went differently, and that sub was parked in a parking lot, and a truck hit it head on. Okay? My wife would be safe, my sub would be destroyed, and I would be very unhappy. The event is exactly the same, the thought is different. Okay? And the difference between them is the difference between your happiness and unhappiness. So it's not, the, it's not the event, it's the thought that makes you unhappy. I'm going to take you a step further. Okay? Does anybody know the difference between pain and suffering? Pain and suffering? I'll tell you very quickly. Suffer, let's start with pain. Pain is that physical, uh, you know, I poke my, uh, my finger with a, with a whatever, uh, with a knife, and, you know, I feel pain. Why do we get pain? We get pain because it's important, it's the alarm system of our bodies, right? Uh, you feel the pain, you go tend to your wounded finger, you put something on it, even before it heals, once it becomes a little safe, your brain suspends the pain and tells you it's okay to go on, and you don't feel the pain anymore. What's suffering? Suffering, go ahead. It's psychological, it's happening here, right? Suffering is, the Uber driver uh, um, you know, is rude to me. The event is painful while I'm in the car. I go out of the car and I dwell on it. Okay? I keep thinking about it over and over and over in my brain. People shouldn't be rude. This is un, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to complain. I have to do this. You know, I, why did he do that to me? I must be someone who is a doormat. Everyone is rude to me. You, know, you, don't, you, know, you don't only keep the event alive, you make it worse. right? As we do that in our brains, we suffer. Suffering, in that case, would, be, would end immediately if you just make out the words vanilla ice cream. Right? If you tell your brain to think about something else, the suffering will end. Yet we never do that. Okay? Suffering truly is a form of self-generated pain. We just keep re renewing the pain over and over. Okay? But suffering is a choice. Because just like I told you to make the words vanilla ice cream, you tell your brain to do anything. You sit in a, in, a, in a lecture and you tell your brain to focus on the topic. You are trying to impress your girlfriend, you tell your brain to tell her certain things. You're trying to you know, solve a math equation, you tell your brain to focus on math. Right? But when your brain tell you, tells you it's time to be unhappy, it's time to suffer because the Uber driver was rude, you do it. You go ahead, you let the brain do what they want. It's a choice. So why do we choose to suffer? Mainly because we're taught to suffer. There has been so many things that were piled on top of us that tells us that's the way we should go through life. I'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, but I want you to... Um, to, uh, to I, I want to explain to you those things in an interesting way. Uh, I, I tried to be an archer all my life. I don't know why I failed, uh, maybe not my, my sport. My son, however, was really interesting. Okay? Um, my son went uh, at age 11, he came and said, guys, I want to learn archery. We took him to an archery club. Six practice sessions later, the instructor said he should actually join the national championship. Okay? At age 11, I sat there watching my son literally pulling every arrow, 
in the bull's eye. A perfect 10. Okay? Took the trophy, never arched again. Right? And I have to be, I have to say, I was intrigued. It's so noisy. This young 11 year old is just, you know, it's so distracting, and he's just pulling one after the next. Okay? And I ha when I was searching for my happiness, and Ali was always my happiness beacon, I was asking myself, there must be a common thing between that character of him being such a calm Zen archer that scores a perfect 10 and being happy all the time. Okay? So I used that analogy in what, uh, you know, in what I call archery land. Okay? Imagine if all of us, we now agreed that happiness should be the target, right? We should solve for happy. Imagine if all of us are archers, we wake up every morning, we go to an arena where we all arch, right? If you score, if you shoot the, the arrow and it hits the bull eye, bull's eye, you're happy. If it doesn't hit the bull eye, bull's eye, you're unhappy. Difficult? Not really, okay? If you, if you look at a world that is a bit like that, you will end up with, in my view, not happy and unhappy, but you will end up with five stages of happiness and suffering, okay? The stages goes, go as follows. Some people will often miss, and some people will, all, will often uh, be on target, okay? They, they, they have, it's a matter of a skill, really, okay? They are good archers, they aim, they take the weather into consideration, they understand the dynamics of it, they pull the, you know, the bow and the pfft. Sometimes they miss and sometimes they, uh, they, they hit the target, okay? I will call those the states, and, and so if they hit the target, they're happy, if they miss the target, they're unhappy, so these stages are what I will call the normal stages of suffering versus happiness. Stay with me here, this is gonna be a little more complex before it gets simpler. Okay? Some, however, uh, the image is not very clear, some will ever will appear like mad on the arena. Like, they will shoot every arrow in the wrong place, they will be all over the place, you will have to be standing behind them because the arrow can hit you, they're really, really doing badly here. Okay? They're unhappy all the time. Right? You ask them what's wrong, they say the wind is not right, it's very foggy, everything is wrong, this is not working well. And you're like, no, it's actually quite okay. Seriously, I mean, there is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. No, what are you talking about? Everything's wrong, I can't even see the target, I can't shoot, it's everyone's mistake, I am totally miserable, totally unhappy. I call this the state of confusion. I hope you're not in that state, okay? But many people are. Then there is the state of, uh, uh, you know, th th there are a few that stop trying, okay? That's actually probably the most common, most common state we all are in the modern world, okay? You know, you shoot an arrow, you become unhappy, and then you shoot another one, you're happy again, and sometimes you're in confusion, and it's like really, really difficult here. So you know what? I'm not going to try to, to, to aim at all. I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm not happy, I'm not unhappy, it's okay, right? I call that the state of escape. And then there are those very few archers, like my, my, my Ali, which were uh, simply blindfolded. They aim, boom, bullseye, boom, bullseye. Every arrow they aim hits the bullseye, okay? And I call that the uh, state of joy, okay? Joy is not used in the common meaning of the English word here. I have no other English word for it, so please accept the word joy. Okay? Joy, joy here is happy all the time, regardless of what's happening in the field. Okay? If the target is not very clear, if there is a little bit of wind left or right, you know, if there is a lot of noise around you, if someone kicks you with their shoulder while you're aiming, you still hit the bullseye. Okay. Now, there is no arrow that is mightier than the arrow of thought. We agreed that happiness is all in a thought. Okay? So let's compare th that stage, those stages to uh, thought. The, st the stages of happiness and suffering happen for us when we are in that incessant thought mode. Do you, do you get that all the time when you're always thinking about what's going on in your life? You, every event that comes your way, you look at it, you assess it, and you say, this is a good event, this is a bad event. This means my, meets my expectations, this doesn't meet my expectations. Do you get those thoughts in your head all the time? And when, when you look at the event and it doesn't meet your expectations, you're very unhappy, when, or unhappy. When, when you look at the event and it meets your expectations, 
you're, un, uh, you're happy, okay? So I, the, the stage of incessant thought, I split it into what I call the right, side of, of, the right side of thought and the left side of thought, okay? Or the wrong side of thought, even better. Now, then there is falling below clarity of thought, okay? That whole illusion that they have in their brains around, oh, it's windy, oh, it's foggy as archers, is really when you're not thinking clear anymore. When you look at your lives here, and I, I'm sorry to say that, when you look at your lives here in sunny California, where everything's okay as compared to an African who's starving, and you say, everything's wrong. I am very unhappy. Life is not meeting my expectations, okay? Truly, you're feeling below clarity of thought. You're in a state of confusion. Then there is suspended thought. That's the most common state, you know, uh, 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 um, um, uh, state in the modern world, okay? Which I call fun. Do you know the word fun? Okay? It's like, okay, look, I'm unhappy, but I'm gonna go dancing. When I dance, somehow my brain will stop. When my brain will stop, I'll go back to my default state, I'll be happy, okay? Once I stop dancing, my, my brain will at attack me again, and I will feel unhappy again, but that's fine, because then I will watch a movie, and I'll be okay, and then when that ends, I will you know, go out running uh, or work out in the gym and I'll be okay. It's that constant feeding of your body with pleasures and sensations that make you stop thinking, okay? That state of escape is the sign of the modern world, which is great, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. You're not a loser. You're in number three. That's great news, okay? The problem with it is it stops. It just has to be fed all the time. Okay, oh my God, I'm not happy, I need to buy another iPhone. Oh, I'm not happy, I need to buy another car. Oh, I'm not happy, I need to go dancing more. I need to be with another woman, I need to be this, I need to do that, right? All the time. Not bad, but not great. Then there are those that rise above thought. Okay, rising above thought is something we're going to spend time on at the end of the day today. But truly, there are those who know exactly where the target is, who actually do realize that things are okay. Events always meet expectations. Even Ali dying is an event that meets expectations because tens of millions of young children at age 21 dies, die every day, every year. Okay? Difficult to accept that for now, but let's just say that if you, stop, if you stop your incessant thought, not by numbing your brain, but by actually accepting the world for what it is, rising above the process of thought, you will end up being happy. Okay, so my task today will be to not talk about suspended thought. I think everyone here knows how to have fun, okay? I, I ask you to use fun wisely, right? There is nothing wrong with having fun. Uh, it suspends your brain, it's a good thing. Do it, but we're not gonna talk about it uh, a lot. What I'm going to do today is I'm gonna try to take you out of confusion into incessant thought. I'll try to remove the confusion, okay? But I won't leave you into suffering I hope to get you to the right side of thought by removing uh, some of the reasons why we see the world wrong, and then hopefully show you a path to get to that state of joy, the state of I'm happy regardless of what happens in the world. Okay? The way to do that is to eliminate, remember, happiness is the absence of unhappiness. Okay? So we're gonna try and eliminate the reasons why we end up in confusion, we end up in suffering, and so on. Okay? And the reasons are very interesting. In my theory, there are six grand illusions that completely blur our minds. Okay? Those six grand illusions, if you remove them, you move from confusion and into just incessant thought. Okay? When, you're incessant thought when, you're, when you're in incessant thought, you're at the, at the mercy of your brain. And your brain is a miserable liar. It never, ever, ever tells you the truth. Okay? Because of seven brain defects. I'm going to take you quickly through the seven brain defects and show you how you can actually see the world for what it really is and accordingly move from uh, 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 you know, um, suffering to happiness as you're assessing things, but assessing them with the truth. And then hopefully, I'll try to show you that there are five ultimate truths. My truth, by the way, your truth might be different. Okay? But I'll try to show you that by anchoring yourself to the truth, every event in the world will not need to go to incessant thought. Okay? Every event in the world will just simply say, yeah, I know that, I expected that. Okay? And when it happened, 
you know, I'm okay with it because I know in reality what life is all about, okay? So it's gonna be a very long day, okay? Believe it or not, it's not as simple as let's just meditate, okay? Uh, I will spend most of the time today in the six grand illusions. The others are simple, actually, okay? But I'll spend most of the time in the six grand illusions because they're so immersive. You will be interested when you see how they've been grabbing you for so long. I put that model together in what I call the 675, and the 675 model basically says if you can see through the six grand illusions, fix the seven brain defects, and anchor yourself in five ultimate truths, you will always, always, always be happy. So, good, let's chat. <laughs>